Hi guys, Audrey here. So today we're going to do a little proof of the theorem. If a series is absolutely convergent, then it is convergent. <coughs> okay, so first let's try to understand what this theorem is saying. So let's say that I have some series, the sum of a to the n, that is an alternating series. So that means it can be re rewritten as the sum n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one, b to the n, where b to the n is positive. Okay, so what this theorem is saying is that well, actually, let's expand these things first. So if I were to expand n equals one to infinity of a sub n, that's like saying n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one b sub n, which would give me b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4 and so on. Okay, now if I were to expand the absolute value of this thing, a sub n, then this would be equal to n equals one to infinity of just b sub n. That negative one to the n plus one in an absolute value is just one. And then we said b sub n is positive right here. So that means when I do the absolute value, what's left over is just b sub n. So then if I were to expand this thing, it becomes b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus b4 plus and so on forever. So in other words, the absolute value, instead of being alternating, we're adding every other one. The alternating series, every other one gets subtracted. In the alternating series, we have something even bigger. I mean, in the non in the absolute value, we have something even bigger because every other term is being added instead of subtracted. So what this theorem is saying is that if this one converges, so does this one. In other words, if we add all of the terms instead of subtracting every other one and it still converges, then the alternating version converges. So this kind of actually also gives us a clue as to how we're gonna approach this theorem because we're thinking the alternating version is gonna give me something less than the absolute value. All right, so let's move ahead to the proof. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is understand our assumption being that n equals one to infinity of a sub n converges. This is our assumption. Now, what does it mean to be a absolute value of a sub n? So if I'm looking at just the absolute value of a sub n, it can equal to one of two things. It can either equal a sub n, because if what's inside is positive, then the absolute value does nothing. Or it can equal to negative a sub n, because if what's inside is negative, the absolute value will make it positive by multiplying by negative one. Okay, so now, what that means then is that zero is less than or equal to a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n, which is less than or equal to two times the absolute value of a sub n. So let's think about why. That absolute value of a sub n, if it's positive a sub n, a sub n plus a sub n is two a sub n, and that's the maximum thing it could take on, is that two a sub n. If the absolute value gives us negative a sub n, well then we have a sub n minus a sub n, which gives us zero, which would be the smallest value it could take on. So then we bound a sub n plus its absolute value by zero and two a sub n, which means then that zero is less than or equal to the sum of a sub n plus the sum of the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to two times the sum of the absolute value of a sub n. But now we're actually done because, well, pretty much. This is because if, the sum of a sub n converges, multiplying it by two isn't going to change that. So the sum of two a sub n 
also converges. Okay, so now let's think about this. If I'm looking for just the sum of a sub n here, the sum of a sub n is equal to the sum of a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n minus the sum of the absolute value of a sub n. Okay, well, our assumption was that this converges. Now, this right here, this is converges by assumption. This sprite here converges by the comparison test because we're comparing it to 2a sub n, which we just said converges by comparison to 2a sub n. Well, then suddenly the sum of a sub n is the sum of two convergent series and thus it must also converge. Okay, let's just go back and talk through that proof one more time to make sure that we understand step by step everything that just happened here. So the first thing is we said our assumption is that the sum of the absolute value converges. Then by remembering what an absolute value means, we were able to say that zero is less than a sub n is less plus its absolute value, which is less than two times the absolute value of a sub n, which means that zero is less than or equal to the sum of a sub n plus the sum of the absolute value of a sub n which is less than or equal to two times the sum of the absolute value of a sub n. But we know that two times the absolute value of a sub n, that sum must converge by our initial assumption because multiplying by two isn't gonna change convergence. So then the sum of a sub n plus the sum of the absolute value of a sub n must also converge by comparison. It's gonna be positive, we said that it's bigger than zero, and it is less than some convergent series. So it converges by comparison. But then we were able to rewrite a sub n as the sum of our initial absolute value and that thing that we just found converges. So we were able to rewrite a sub n, that sum of a sub n, as the sum of two convergent series. So, but, so it must also converge. That's all, bye guys.